Hello, Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors. And today we're up here at my bonus room at the house. This is where it all started. This is where I got the idea to come up with a product which is now called the Helping Hand to help me with my electronics experimenting and so forth. The idea was that when I'm working around with electronics, as you can see here, with small components and resistors and different jumper boards and so forth, I was having trouble seeing what I was doing. And as a matter of fact, one of the reasons that I haven't had a video out for the last several weeks is because I've had eye surgery in both eyes, uh, cataract surgery, and that kind of put me behind on doing a lot of things here and down at the print farm. But anyway, the eyes are healing well and I do see better now, but still not well enough to be able to do certain things without actually being able to have additional lighting uh, like I get from the helping hand here or from some magnification that I sometimes need. Now, the problems with my eyes, I have macular degeneration, which makes my right eye almost impossible to, or actually makes it impossible to focus on anything. The peripheral part of it's okay but when it comes to soldering or something because of that lack of vision in the right eye I have no depth perception and if you've ever tried to solder something with one eye you'll know what I'm talking about so several of these things have been a problem for me and the helping hand is helping to resolve some of that and I have been able to come up with solutions that have helped me very much. As you can see, this helping hand has a clamp to hold wires or whatever, has a flexible LED light, and then it has this very bright one here on it that I can use. If I don't need a lot of light, I can just use this little flex arm light. But if I need a whole lot of light, then that's when I then I can plug that in and go and get a whole lot of light. But right now we don't need a whole lot, so we'll just use this flex arm light. And that allows me to be able to have enough light to see what I'm doing, to have as many clamps as I want to put on this unit. This is a table mount, and there's also another table mount over here where I do some of my soldering. But over here, this area, this is where I'm experimenting around and I have my oscilloscopes and signal generators and frequency counters and so forth and volt ohm meters, power supplies and all of these little compartments that you see around here are full of electronic components that I'm able to use in doing some of my experiments and stuff. When I decided that I needed something and came up with the idea for the helping hand, I needed a way to make the parts and that's where the 3D printers came in. So now I have over a hundred 3D printers, all different sizes, shapes and so forth, and have learned a lot about the 3D printers and how to use them. I have to admit, I like electronics. I spent a large period of my life working with electronics, and a lot of my education was in electronics. And I love taking circuits and different components and boards and wiring them up, coming up with different configurations, and then being able to use the test equipment to 
see what those devices are doing and to be able to check output frequencies of a circuit, set different variables, and having the test equipment and being able to change these different uh, settings. Okay, cut this gain down a little bit here. Okay, what we're doing here, we're just checking the, the waveforms from this device. And you can see, as I change the frequency here, it's showing the waveforms on the oscilloscope. So, the same thing with our circuits. We can generate signals, put them into a circuit, and see what that does. We can also generate signals within a circuit or a board and look at that on the scope and figure those things out. We can measure frequencies. We can uh, use these meters to measure voltage, uh, resistance, and so forth. And of course, the helping hand's always a helpful tool to give us light, hold things for us, and a lot of other things. Anyway, here we go again. There are many electronic devices that I'd like to be using on some upcoming projects, including the Arduino boards, which are basically a microprocessor controller board with several input and outputs, analog and digital. And they have some new devices like the DigiSpark, which is a very small postage stamp size board that plugs into a USB port. And you can download your program into the board or the controller and it's a small processor but it will take several inputs and create several outputs so it's a very good useful tool very small compact lightweight low power and has the capability to add control functions to products that we can make and incorporate 3d printing into and also, I'm looking at using some of these devices to enhance my 3D printers by adding some external process control functions to them. And it can be done very inexpensively. These devices only cost a few dollars. And for that amount of money, they can do quite a bit of capability if you're willing to take the time to learn how to use them, how to wire them up how to program them. Hopefully soon I'll be able to spend more time coming up with, with ideas here and things that I can incorporate. That's some of the plan. One of the things that I'm very interested in doing is incorporating more electronics into my 3D printed parts. I'm trying to come up with things like I believe in one of the previous videos I showed you this part right here. This is a freestanding fume extractor to be used when soldering. And it basically has an intake, a motor, and a charcoal activated filter on the other end. And I can use it right over here at my soldering station. And then I also have one that will attach to the helping hand there. And we did some experiments with these to try to increase and get as much flow as we could through these things. We've even made our own filters. Back to the electronics a little bit. One of the things that I've used in my electronics experiments and stuff is, has been the Arduino board, which is a microprocessor controller control board that's programmable that will allow you to accept multiple inputs analog digital and create outputs of a digital or analog form or, or pulse width modulated form 
so that you can control motors and lights and different circuits and so forth. So, with all of this technology, and now with the 3D printing capability of being able to design mechanical features that go with these electronic devices, I can see integrating those and coming up with a multitude of new products that are a combination of electromechanical process control board operated or controlled devices. One of the first things that I came up with when I was fooling around with the electronics part of things and knew that I was coming up on retirement from the construction business, I thought of Halloween fixtures where I could take a Halloween uh, ghost or scarecrow or something and have LEDs for the l eyes and have them change intensity and in brightness and red and have mechanical motion of arms and stuff that would mechanically move and based on motion detection you know different things like that and I had all these ideas another one was a garden scarecrow I was going to have a little device that you could put out in your garden that would be motion sensitive, that would detect rabbits or deer or something coming into your garden. And when it detected them, it could emit light and sounds, strobes, whatever, and even have multiples of these around the garden. And once one's activated, it will automatically activate the others for a period of 15 seconds or something to scare off whatever animals are getting into your garden. So those were some of the ideas that I was coming up with, with just electronics, just working with electronics. And now that I have the 3D printing capability of making all kinds of mechanical devices and devices that can be integrated in with this electronics, I see a, just an unlimited potential. The only problem is that the 3D printing part of it and my product, the Helping Hand and the Lap Diner and some other things I've worked on have consumed so much of my time that I haven't had time to actually get back, let's say, to my roots and work with my electronics stuff here and come up with these different products or devices and integrate them into the 3D printing. So that's what I'm hoping to be able to do soon. So until the next time, happy printing from New Tech Inventors. <laughs>